talking about the uh, the language resources. So like you have here uh, uh, me and Catherine and other researchers from University of Gothenburg in uh, Sweden. We created this Arabic tweet sentiment analysis data. Also, the uh, we participated in the Arab Lang ID, which is a shared task, and you you have also here the Shami Corpus, which is a, a Levantine Arabic dialect. It's the Jordanian, Palestinian, uh, Syrian, and uh, Lebanese uh, um, language resources. So it's 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 really important resources. This one, and we also had a lexical distance of uh, Arabic dialects, and um, you have here, uh, uh, I would say, the Wikidoc aligner. It's it's a tool to align comparable corpus. The comparable corpus. It's uh, like Wikipedia. You have the article in. Uh, it's like some article in English and you have the equivalent one in Arabic and French and Spanish and so on. So we have to, this tool to align all these uh, language resources. OK, and. Um, uh, so the point here is that uh, the, the language resources are so important, so that's why it's it's really if you if you are thinking to work on natural language processing, if there is no resources, it's it's a significant contribution to create a language resources and not only to create it, because once you create it, you should also evaluate uh, the, the, the language resources and uh, publish this work so other researchers can use it and uh, also develop and contribute with the natural language processing fields. OK, <clears throat> how to evaluate How to evaluate Yes. Uh, you can uh, evaluate the language resources uh, it's like for uh, it's like um, on some task, like uh, for instance, the squad data set since, since it's a questioning answering data set. So the best task to, uh, to evaluate it is the uh, is the QA uh, natural language processing task. If you have um, um, uh, a corpus that is uh, uh, that is open domain corpus. You can uh, evaluate it by uh, um, by building a machine by building a language model from that corpus, and you can use it either for so you build the language model for from the text corpus that you collected, and you can evaluate it either on machine translation task or either on a speech speech recognition task. So because these two tasks requires a language model to evaluate. So if you have a, a collection of documents that is has no category, has no label, it's just a free text. It's like the best task to evaluate it is the to, to build a language model from that uh, task. If you uh, collect a collection of documents and you have a label for each document, so you can uh, you can evaluate it with uh, like text classification task. And if you have uh, if you collected a language resources in uh, like in so many languages, which is called uh, a parallel corpus. So let me jump here to the parallel corpus. So you have uh, it's like the English text. Uh, OK, so this is true as long as uh, um, account is taken of the uh, 20 per cent. OK, so this is the French text. C exists. Uh, C, C, C exact. C uh, uh, um, uh, L on considere la uh, question on tant compte do, uh, de uh, van pour uh, cent. So it's like you have the same text in English and the same text in Netherlands. It's the language of Dutch people in in Netherlands. So uh, this is this is called parallel corpus. So if you collected such parallel corpus, so each uh, each sentence and the source language and its translation and 
target languages. So the best way to evaluate these resources with it's like doing a machine translation experiments on it. If you collected uh, a collection of documents, uh, that is, uh, uh, it's like you have a collection of documents and you have a queries, okay, and a set of relevant documents, then you can evaluate this uh, language resource uh, with information retrieval task because uh, with information retrieval task, you can, okay, for a given query, you compare if the, like the golden relevant documents are the same, that is, that are, uh, uh, that, that are uh, retrieved by the IR system. So it depends on the nature of the uh, uh, language resources you collect. So you need to um, evaluate it with some, uh, with at least one natural language uh, processing task, at least I would say it's like it's better that you evaluate it with more than one uh, la natural language processing task if, if that is applicable. Okay, so uh, that is so far for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, the QA system. The QA system, uh, neural network architecture, uh, it's like I will not talk about it because it's uh, it's mostly it's sequence to sequence model with attention, and um, um, uh, uh, that is something that you will take I think with uh, in another course uh, I would say. So, but the the basic idea of the uh, the basic idea of the of this uh, uh, complex uh, recurrent neural network, but because as you see here, it's it's an ensemble. That means it's it's a block of uh, uh, RNN. It's it's an ensemble of RNN blocks. So so you build an RNN block like this. Okay, it's a complex one. Oh, sorry, it's RNN. Okay, and you have so many deaths of this block, uh, of these blocks. Okay, and you can you can make it work together uh, as an ensemble to to uh, to as a one block logical block like this. So that's why these uh, models are really complex. And you have here the bird single model, and here you have the ensemble, and there is. Uh, uh, other speciality in the recurrent neural network, which is the attention block, which is uh, like it helped to um, to the, the the machine learning model to understand the context uh, uh, of the of the of the text, so it can generate or can extract better result. We will see this in uh, in in the machine translation task. So uh, the machine translation. Uh, is the task of translating of sentence sentence X. So this is the source uh, to the sentence Y. So this is the source language and this is the tar target language as you see here. So imagine that X is French and Y is English. So the man is born free, but everywhere he is in a chain. So uh, in in a libre et partout il est dans la fête. So can you, it's like the, 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 we have something called alignment here uh, in machine translation. And with alignment, it's, uh, it's like partout, uh, it's, it's like everywhere. Okay. But here it's like les hommes, les hommes, but it's like the, uh, uh, this is with a definite article, as you see here. It, it, it has no equivalent in English. This is something we have the same in Arabic sometimes. Okay. Uh, 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 so it's it's uh, not always that you have for every source word you have an equivalent target uh, word uh, uh, like this. Okay, so uh, we have here it's like additional definite, definite article for the ruler for the chain. Okay, and. Uh, so the machine translation started so early in 19s in the Cold War because the 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 objective is to build uh, a, a machine translation system that translates Russian into English, 
and it was rule based system and it 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 relies on the bilingual dictionaries and it has a lot of errors and uh, because not always it's like you have it's like you need to consider the context you you don't you don't uh, uh, it's like it's not possible to rely only on the bilingual dictionary to translate the source into the target word by word it doesn't work OK, so this period, oh, sorry. This period, it's like we have the statistical machine translation, which is it's it's a probabilistic model. OK, so suppose that we translate from English, from French to English. So this is X and this is Y. OK, so it's the task is to find the best English sentence Y given a French sentence one. So you have the parallel corpus as it's like this is the source sentences it's like the X and the Y. So for, for, for a given X, you want to find the best Y. This is the task and you can um, yeah, exploit a uh, uh, probabilistic model. So, so we want to arg max Y to find the best Y given that it's like we want uh, like the probability, what is the probability that it's like, OK, it's like this Y is translation of X, so Y given X. And we want the maximum probability, the highest probability uh, for that. OK, so this is the language model that I talked about. So because uh, uh, the probability of Y, it's the probability of a given word in a target language. So imagine that uh, an English language uh, because it's it's uh, it's the the target, okay? Uh, for English language, it's uh, what is the probability of the word phone, for instance, or the word door? So you compute the probability of this by by computing the the frequency of the word of the of the word door. With regards the like the, the the vocabulary size or the the number of tokens in that corpus so that's why you can uh, 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 see if this word is probable more than another word or not so that is something that you need to consider with the uh, uh, statistical machine translation this part is called the translation model the probabilistic translation model and this is the the, the language model so you combine both to produce the that translation that was very active from 1990 uh, uh, up to uh, uh, 2010. Then afterwards, we have uh, uh, the um, the deep learning, uh, 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 the neural machine translation, which we will talk about it later. Okay, so as I mentioned. For in that period, we needed a parallel corpus, a large amount of parallel corpus. And by the way, it's like the first parallel corpus we have is the Rosita stone. It's uh, it's an Egyptian one, so it's uh, it's an it's an agreement that is written in ancient Egypt, uh, Egyptian, and ancient Greek and uh, 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 Demotic languages. So this is the three languages that is. Uh, uh, so this is the first parallel text uh, in the world, by the way. And OK, I showed that like the, the parallel corpus. What does it mean? So you should have so many sentences like this to be able to build machine translation system. And uh, OK, so the, the how, how to align uh, words for statistical machine translation? Uh, so we can introduce uh, like a latent variable. So like we need the probability of X and the alignment A given Y. So the alignment, we can do it at the word level to find uh, the correspondence for every word in the source language uh, and the, uh, the, to the corresponding target uh, uh, word in the sentence in the target language. So it's like you it's like you have here in the German and English. So you have the, the order problem. It's 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 similar to Arabic uh, that you have 
the word order uh, problem. So, so the, the word order, uh, uh, it's like with regarding the Arabic, it's it's the opposite with English. So that's that's why the sometimes the alignment is so hard. Okay, and uh, you have here it's like additional law here. It's the, the definite article. It exists. It's like so. It's, uh, it's it's freak it's 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 usual like this in French to have this, okay. And uh, the alignment can be many to many. So it's like you have the law, balance, uh, uh, rest, and these three words are equivalent to one word. It's like three English words are equivalent to one word. Two are equivalent to one. Two are equivalent to one. So that's why many to one. And here you can have the opposites like one to many. So uh, you have here this word is like it's like has three equivalent uh, uh, words in and uh, it can be mapped into three words in, in French. So that's why the alignment is is so difficult. So uh, with the alignment, it's you have you have uh, you can build that statistically. You provide the parallel corpus, okay. And the probabilistic model can uh, it's like uh, it matches how many times that this uh, uh, it's like this phrase it has a it's like the similar equivalence with the target phrase, and if the the frequency is high, it put it in the in the phrase table as uh, it's like aligned phrases like this. Okay, so um, okay, so uh, uh, we need to understand that it's like that the, this terminology, the decoding in statistical machine translation, because it's not like other uh, NLP model. You make. Uh, uh, classification is not a classification, so uh, you decode because you transform. Uh, it's like you translate the source into the target. This process is called decoding. So decoding, you need only to compute this based on the, uh, it's like uh, the, based on the uh, probabilistic model that you you have. Okay. Uh, so at the end of this period, we have statistical machine translation. It was a huge research field and it was uh, uh, extremely complex and and it, it requires a lot of feature engineering and you need extra resources and a lot of human efforts if you want to repeat the effort for the for each language pair because you need to do a lot of work for each language. Then we have the period of the neural machine translation, which is it's like 2011 up to now. So it's uh, 20, 10 years now with the neural machine translation. With the neural with the neural machine translation, we we the, the architecture is sequence to sequence, and simply it's just two RNN. So you have the encoder and the decoder. Okay, and this is simply an RNN, and this is simply an RNN. So it's like we express this block as an RNN. So it has so many RNN uh, 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 networks here. And uh, the idea is to translate this source text into a vector. This is the role of the encoder. And the role of the decoder is to, pro to take this source, to take this vector, Okay, and to generate the target sentence. So I am a student, just we, but you don't. So it's like the idea, it's like the, the task for this is, so this is different, by the way, this is different from the, the statistical machine translation. So you have this is as an input, okay, and you have this, that as an output. So you fine tune this to generate this uh, vector, okay, and the decoder, take this as an input, okay, and the output is the, the text in the target language. So you fine tune the encoder and the decoder together 
to 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 achieve a good result uh, with the machine translation. <coughs> I'm sorry. Just one moment. Uh, excuse me, I was drinking some water. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the details of this is like you have here the sequence input. Okay, this is the RNN encoder. As you see here, it's recurrent neural network. So you have the input and the output you provided to the next. Uh, node and so on. Okay, and here you generate the target sentence. It's like uh, you you provide you generate the target and you provide it again as an input to generate the next word and so on. Okay, uh, Victor Martez, just uh... yes. Yes, for this one, you know, usually we know when we do this, uh, um, we have for every word a vector, right? Usually yes. we, yeah, then, uh, but the, the, the change here is that we have the uh, encoder, okay? Uh, which uh, is it, is, does it somehow combines all the vectors in one vector? Because each yep. word, each word is a vector, right? Which yes, just, yes. In the natural language processing, like each word is a vector, right? In the RNN. Exactly, okay. exactly. So, yeah, fine. So, uh, the encoding means that it puts all these vectors in one, in this yes. case. That, that exactly. Works. Okay. Exactly, exactly. So, the RNN is somehow is averaging all the vectors uh, into one uh, uh, outward vector. Okay. okay and, and, and the trick for the machine translation uh, system, by the way, it's very simple. It's it's imagine that it's uh, imagine that it's uh, um, it's uh, it's like you it's like for it's like you concatenate the source and the target sentences and you provide it to the neural network. Okay, and you just to provide the source to make the neural network to predict what is the target. That is the idea. So imagine that it's like you right here, it's like I, I go to university every day, okay? And uh, in Arabic you say it's like adhab ila jami'a kul yom. And it's like you train, so it's like you concatenate this source and target and you provide it to the neural network. So it's it it learns that it's like when you provide this part, it will generate the rest of the sentence. It's it's something like it complete the sentence. So it's it's a trick for the machine translation for for the recurrent neural network that it's uh, it can generate the the to complete the sentence. That's why you have here the markers start and end. So once you reach to end, stop, stop generating uh, uh, more uh, next words. Okay. Can you give just a, a more clear example about this? If you don't mind, I mean, like if. Yeah. Just this clear. A clear example. Uh, yeah, what I mean, what I mean, a clear example. Like um, you said that the the machine uh, translation is a sort of uh, 
uh, sort of uh, concatenation, right? This is what you mentioned. Concatenation yes. between like the input and the target, right? This is what you yes. said. Yes, 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 so, yes. Yes, yeah, so just I want I mean a clear example so that uh, we all can understand what you mean exactly by that. OK, OK, so uh, uh, maybe I should uh, describe what uh, the language model is. Uh, it's like in the language model, it's it's like for a one language. It's like we don't have two languages. You have, uh, for instance, it's uh, it's, uh, it's like for English language is uh, that it's, uh, it's like um, you search, you, 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 you have some corpus, OK, some text. OK, and you build a probabilistic model based on that. What I mean by probabilistic model, you take the n grams. It depends. It's like maybe you take three grams or four grams or seven grams. And the idea is that it's like if I type, OK, I go to. OK, and you bought here, it's like uh, please complete. So what are the options like I go to where? I go to the school, I go to the restaurant, I go to the, um, uh, uh, I go to the uh, university, I go to the market. So you have so many options, okay? And the, the point here is to calculate what is the most probable, given that sequence, what is the most probable place that you are you, you go to and it's you you re, you really it's like you know this because it's uh, uh, in the search engine here it's uh, let's Im imagine that it's like we want to search for something like <coughs> <coughs> I don't know how it's like I don't have an example uh, in mind if you can help me it's uh, um, yeah uh, verification as you see it's like okay verification code verification versus validation it's used by the search engine the, the language model okay based on it's like you provide the first word and it can predict what is the next okay is that clear for the for it's like so far yeah, yeah, I mean, and the, my question was uh, related. OK, uh, this is clear. Uh, my question okay, was. No, 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 I, I will move to the next. Yes, I will move to the next step. That's that's mm -hmm. why I say that mm -hmm. here. It's like maybe I should describe what the language model is, is that you can predict what is the next word based on the context. And that's why it's really important in speech recognition. For instance, you uh, you say it open the door. OK, so the, 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 the speech recognizer was confused between two words. It's like door and I don't know, window, maybe let's say. OK, so he can decide what is the best based on the probability. What's well, like what is more probable window or door given that context? And for machine translation, maybe it's the time to show you the. Because you asked me last time to show some bits and uh, I, I need to change to English because it's automatic on based on the region. OK, so here, as you see in the TensorFlow, TensorFlow is uh, is a deep learning library that was uh, it's like developed by Google and it's open source. And you have another one which is called uh, ByTorch. And ByTorch, it's also a deep learning uh, um, library that was built by Facebook and it's also open source. And the reason why these companies uh, it's like make these libraries open source because they want to accelerate the development of this library because it's like, can you imagine that uh, uh, it's like the version that we reach here, it's 2.7 for the TensorFlow. It's, 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 it's like every month you have a release because an, it's an open source and everyone can contribute. And here in the tutorials, you have so many sections. It's like you can see how you can uh, build deep, uh, a uh, neural network to, to deal with images. So you have convolutional neural network, image classification. So you have a recipe 
to see to 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 see to 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 classify images into classes. Our target today it's the text today. OK, so in the text here, you have the neural machine translation. So you have word embedding, you have text classification. OK, and also you have uh, text generation. Uh, so you can generate a story or you can it's like it based on the on the uh, uh, um, uh, on the training data. So we go here to the neural machine translation with this. It's like you go to the step it's like show use it, it. It it describe the concept that is OK. We we here use a sequence to sequence model as we describe to test to translate Spanish. Uh, uh, to English, OK, and and this is the reference paper effective approach to attention based uh, neural machine translation. So uh, the, it's like the concept of attention, by the way, it's 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 uh, to improve the the capability of the machine uh, uh, translator to understand the context better so that every time he should uh, it's like make attention to to uh, to uh, for a given uh, uh, token to accurately translate the source uh, to the target. OK, so <clears throat> this is the setup from the beginning. And by the way, you can run it on Colab, so you can just click like this. So you will have the Colab. I, I'm sure that you know Colab, right? If you don't know, I can tell you. Students, please. <laughs> no, we know it. We used it actually in the machine. OK, learning. yes, exactly. So this is the imports. OK, and uh, it's like this is the data. So may I borrow this book? OK, and you have here uh, it's like the translation uh, in this format. So it's it's exactly in one sentence. And this is the source of the. <clears throat> so this is tab limited bilingual sentences and you have here uh, Arabic English data. If you want to uh, to make an exercise on this or you want to make a project on this, so it's it's you, you just need to, to change the path of the data with, to the Arabic one. And <clears throat> OK, so we downloaded the data from that. So English to Spanish. OK, and we read the sentences it's like as a sentence pairs. OK, so we have here the, the target and the input. OK. And so this is the target. Uh, so this is the last sentence we just to display it. As you see here, if you if you want to sign like a native speaker, you must blah, blah, blah. And you have Um, to have you have uh, okay this is this is completely english okay and um, what i want to show you here it's, it's this is to prepare the data OK, so you here you surround the data with start and the end. And here is the attention model as as I said, so it's. Yes. So you have here a text example. OK, and uh, it's like this is how you surround it with the start and end. OK, and. OK, so this is the input minus one. This is the last one. OK, so this is the Spanish one and this is the English one, the target minus one. So we can coordinate the source and the target together. So it will be like uh, a language model that it's, uh, it's like you build 
you 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 it's like you say good morning and you ask the language model to complete to see sabah al khair something like this and uh, I can jump to the code. <clears throat> this is encoder. This is decoder. Yes, this is decode. So, so this is the first step, and the second step is to There is some partition here. Okay. I can't find it now. Um, anyway, I mean, it is actually even, it's uh, really very difficult for us to see the screen. I mean, because the script is very small. So, anyway, okay. I mean, you can just proceed. I mean, the idea is clear. Okay. Okay, so it's uh, um, 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 okay. So, so let me let me recap. So, so the first uh, uh, neural network architecture is that you have encoder, decoder. So you have input. And the encoder converted into like a vector, and you have the decoder. It takes that vector to generate the target sentence. This is the first approach, and the second approach is the language model. And the language model is, uh, is like you can coordinate the source and the target, and you provide the source to predict the target word. So it's like maybe this is um, it's like better if we make separation. Of this, I don't have uh, like a slide for that to make it much easier. But it's uh, like let's say that they are uh, there are two approaches for that. So you have the sequence to sequence model, so the encoder decoder, and you have uh, it's like the language model where you can concatenate the source and the target to generate the to predict the the translation for in the target language. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let me just write that uh, that simple example. So it's like you say, "Good morning." Okay, you and you can concatenate it with "Bonjour." Okay, so it's, it's like when once you can concatenate it, it's like. The, the language model considered it as one as one language and and you just provide this good morning and you want to predict the next word as we saw in it's like as, as as I showed you in the Google search engine you just write the first word and the Google predict what can be the next like this I hope that much 
uh, I hope this is much clearer now. Yes, it's clear. Thank you. OK. OK, so it's like the machine translation, the neural machine translation. It's like, do we have a progress? Uh, Uh, it's like compared with the statistical machine translation. So we started to make an advancement with the like with the 2005. Before it's like we have the phrase based machine translation and the syntax based machine translation. Both are statistical. It's like we have slightly difference between their performance and it's like the first time we have result with the neural machine translation. It was 2000. 15. And the result was not that not much. It's, it wasn't comparable to the, the phrase base and the syntax based machine translation. It was better. But the year after, we have a significant improvement, as you see. OK, so that's that's all for the uh, for the. For the machine translation, any questions so far before? Moving to the last part of our lecture, if we have time. No, it's clear. Actually, I've been waiting for the Arabic NLP. OK. <clears throat> OK, for the Arabic NLP. So we have uh, it's like the Arabic NLP as any other languages. We have uh, it's like the main challenges that is applicable for other languages, but uh, but we have uh, more challenges uh, special for Arabic, which is uh, the first one is the orthographic uh, ambiguity. The, la the second one, the uh, morphological uh, richness. And the third one, the dialectal vari variation. And the last one is the orthographic inconsistency. So regarding the orthographic uh, um, ambiguity because because of that of because of the di 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 diacritics we have the word can change like that like diacritics can change the meaning so consider this example so we have this like different words with different diacritics and totally they have different uh, uh, meaning okay so that is one of the challenges if you normalize the text and you remove the di diacritics like you like you lose the meaning if you keep the diacritics then it's like you have uh, high dimensional data so that's the first uh, challenge uh, you can solve this challenge by by considering the context and uh, it's like as much as you can so maybe you can consider maybe four or five grams uh, to be able to um, it's like understand the context and the second one is the rich morphology. In fact, a lot of people, they like it's like Arab researchers, especially, they say the Arabic has a complex morphology. It's not complex. It's rich morphology because uh, it's it's like it's it's highly highly inflicted languages. It's highly inflicted language. And for 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 example, you have an Arabic. You have about 5,000 inflicted forms for the verb, but for English only you have six, and the Chinese you only have one. So that's why we have a rich morphology in Arabic. That is another challenge. And uh, and I would say in, in uh, it's like I will go back to orthographic uh, uh, ambiguity because it's uh, it's. Uh, it's like if you if you want uh, it's, uh, with the, with the morphology you can you can say that okay one word in Arabic it can it can be translated into five words in English and this is this is really uh, a challenge for the machine translation because Arabic language is a grenative uh, a grenative uh, it's like the, the, the letter are agnolative. That means that you, it's like the letters are connected to, together. So the, the, the word and the, the conjunctive y, wow, and uh, 
and the pronoun it's it's all it's it's it can be connected to the word that is a challenge for for the arabic language and the third challenge is the dialectal uh, variations because we have uh, like three variations i would say the first one is the classical arabic which is the quranic arabic and the historical text and the second one is the modern standard, which is the official language, the language that is used in the news and the media. And we have the third variation, which is the dialects. It's the spoken dialect that we use daily, day to day. It has no standard, it has no grammar. That is really a big challenge. And it's, it's used in the social media. That's why researchers, started to work on the dialects because if you want to monitor the social media you need to understand what is uh, it's like what it's like what the people are saying there what is uh, it's like you need to understand the text and for the for the dialects you have the course classification like gulf uh, levantine and egyptian and maghribi and for the fine grain for the gulf you 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 say that okay this is Bahraini this is Omani this is Saudi and so on and for for the Shami it's the same you say this is Jordanian this is Le Lebanese and so on and even the dialect itself it has sub dialect you have the urban rural and Bedouin and you have some dialect in the north in the same country and so it's like another accent or a dialect in the south also it applies to the east and the west okay and uh, okay so what you can do with the arabic language i here uh, like give you some language resources uh, so it's like you have this first reference which is the critical survey of uh, arabic language uh, arabic language corpora by by Wajdi, it's uh, it's like with this review you can have a look for for the uh, the Arabic language resources. You have uh, raw text corbora, annotated corbora, lexicon, speech corbora. If you want to work on speech recognition, handwritten miscellaneous corbora. So you have a review for all these corbora. So you can have. You can find the reference and you can find the language resources for that. And you have also here the other reference if you want to work on the Arabic language. So it's the Arabic natural language processing and overview. So it reviews the techniques for the Arabic language and also the, the Arabic language resources in one of the sections uh, uh, in this paper. So it's like you have the links. Uh, the, the, the links for the two reads to do these two references and you can have a look on it and also you have uh, uh, this guy Taha Zarruqi is from Algeria and he's very active on the uh, on the Arabic natural language processing he released a lot you can find him in GitHub uh, LinkedIn uh, uh, his channel on YouTube and he uh, uh, like made a lot of language tools for Arabic. So if you go here to the repository, you have the PY Arabic. It's a library for Arabic NLP. So you can do the basic Arabic um, NLP like normalization. Uh, uh, you can do uh, a stop word removal. You can. Um, uh, you can uh, normalize the text and so on. And you have the Qurtub, which is the Arabic verb conjugator. So you can, uh, and it's like you provide the, the verb and you have a list of conjunction. And you have Tashfin. Tashfin, it's an Arabic light steamer. If you are interested to, to, to use um, Arabic uh, steaming. And by the way, the, what is the difference between the light steamer and the Arabic steamer? Uh, simply Arabic light steamer removes uh, only prefix and suffix, but the steamer removes remove the prefix, suffix, and infix. 
and that means it's like the the it's like the 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 additional letters that you have uh, inside the word okay and Mishkal, it's it's like to to vocalize the Arabic vocalization software, so it can make uh, it can um, add uh, diacritics, uh, diacritics to the to the Arabic text. So it has a lot of projects that uh, it's like the the uh, the community contributed, and one of the last contribution of him is that it's like the language tool, which is something like Grammarly. I, I know that I'm sure that you know Grammarly. So this is an open source tool for proofreading. So you just provide the text and you. You have you you um, and this is this is called writing assistant. It, it improves your writing and he contributed to the Arabic language to this tool. And yes, it has a lot of uh, uh, it's like you have, you really need to have a look on this, it's like the projects of this guy to, if you want to work on Arabic language. We also have the camel tool. The camel tool, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a tool developed by camel uh, lab at the New York University Abu Dhabi. And it, you can do a lot of things with this tool. It's, uh, so it's it's well documented. It's uh, show you how to install, how uh, it's like you can see the full documentation. The full documentation you can know what kind of uh, Arabic NLP task that you can do. So here you can apply morphology. It's like you can more apply word disambiguation, part of speech tagging, tokenization. Uh, Dialect ID, so you can identify the dialect with this tool. Also, you can apply sentiment analysis and an an uh, ER, the named entity recognition. So you can identify uh, uh, places, uh, locations, uh, people name in the text. Okay, so you have here some examples. I would say. So you have here an example, okay? So Emirate Abu Dhabi here, Ahna Emirat Dawla, the Emirat Al Arabiya Al Muttahida Sabra, and you print the result uh, for the named entity recognition. Uh, so you have uh, uh, you have uh, identified uh, like the it's like the name of the country uh, uh, and also the uh, the name of the city. Uh, which is tagged here. So you have it with examples here. So it's it's also open source. That is a good thing that it's like we have such tool as an open source to allow other researchers to uh, to use this tool. Uh, this is a summary table for the things that you can do with Camel. We have another tool which is uh, Farasa. Farasa, it's also an open source. It's implemented in Java and it has a Python wrapper. And again, here it's like you have some documentation how to install and how to use. You have here a collab uh, a notebook to show you how to use the tool. You can use it for part of speech tagging, named entity recognition, the criticizer. Segmentation, center segmentation, and stimmer. And you have here a comparison between the Arabic NLP tool because you also have the Stanford Core NLP. It support uh, multi 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 uh, multi languages, uh, including Arabic. Okay, so you have uh, uh, like the Camel and the Core, the Stanford uh, Core NLP, and Ferasa. And OK, this is implemented in Python. This is in Java and Java with Python binding. As I said, it's you have a Python wrapper and this is Java and you have it's like what is there and what is not there for every comparison aspect here. So it's uh, as you see here, Camel to tool, it's, it has a lot of features as you see. 
OK, that is just like another comparison that was made by Taha Zeruki uh, uh, 2020. So it's like it's like he's the guy who made this comparison, by the way. And uh, it's like the last thing I would like to mention that uh, Apple and Google is uh, they are developing CPUs with the neural engine to make the NLP task faster. And as you say, as as we see that it's uh, you you have with with the smartphone a lot of things that you can do with the natural language processing. And if you would like to read a book about the natural language processing, you have this reference. It's one of the greatest book on the natural language processing. It's uh, speech and language processing by Dan Jirowski and Martin. And you have an electronic copy of this book. And uh, thank you so much uh, for your attention. And if you have questions, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, uh, the last thing I would like to show you the list listing. Okay, this is, if you allow me, hugging face. I don't know if you know this. So the hugging face is uh, is uh, is uh, um, um, an open source project for natural language processing where people can contribute with models and data sets. OK, and with models, as you see here, it's like it depends on the task. So you have this task, the fill, ma fill, fill mask, questioning, answering, summarization, table questioning, answering, classification, generation, a lot of. And you have. Yeah, image classification, image segmentation, text to image. That is computer vision and that this is for the audio. And you have translation. You have a lot of tasks, by the way, and not only with you can see models by task, you can see models by languages. So you can filter by English, Spanish, French, and you have Arabic. So you can filter models for Arabic language. OK, so one of the things I can show you the Arabic QA. Uh, so I pick QA and Arabic. You have. I have this. OK, so you have here the, the question and the context. OK, Mahuan of Lamal Hukum Fi Lubnan, Lubnan. أو رسميا الجمهورية اللبنانية هي دولة عربية إلى آخره. فـ you can click on compute. So what is ما هو نظام الحكم في لبنان؟ ديمقراطي جمهوري طوائفي. And that is that is like you you try you can try it online here. But if you want, you can install this open source machine learning model. But it's like you like you you clone this repository and this is the code how you can use it uh, on, on your machine. And as you see here, you have the answer and you have the start and the end and the score how the machine learning model is certain that is the answer. OK, and. OK, this is for the QA it's like I can I can let you explore. OK, I, I remove the filter for Arabic for film mask. You can, uh, you uh, can Dr. use, yes. Dr. Mathis, can you please send the link on the chat so we will can we can explore it? Yes, please. Um, chat. I don't have access to chat. I don't know. Uh, okay, maybe, maybe I send it. Maybe I send it to Dr. Nabil and Dr. Nabil we he he will forward it to you. OK, okay. Fine, no problem, yes. OK, so it's uh, for the filling out the mask. It's here you can imagine what language model is. So I can pick one of them. I don't know which one, maybe Roberta or Excel and um, Roberta base. So um, yeah, maybe this is not a good example. Let me pick the first one. 
Yes. So the goal of life, you here put a mask. OK, the mask is that it's like you tell the system, OK, I want to predict this world. So what what you what you can expect? So this is based on the birth model. And here is you have the details about the masked language model to make you able to predict the sentence. So we can click compute and. It's like life, survival, love, so and you have the, the score. So the highest score is it's like the goal of life is. Um, is um, the goal of life is life? I don't know. It's, it's okay. Maybe we can try another example. Like it's like I am hungry. I need and I got. So the prediction, as you see, it's not as much perfect as you see here. It's, uh, it's so the prediction is dot. So it's not uh, as much perfect as you see. So you have a lot of this is one models of the of the of the um, filling the mask. You can have you can you can try another one. Maybe this is better as you see, and you keep trying until you find the best model that you can try. OK, Paris is of France. So what you like, what is the prediction here? Is the capital of France? So maybe it's like I'm um, hungry. And I need. It's the same. You have here food. It's it's in the prediction. This is better a little, a little bit. So and you have here bread. OK, this is a little bit better. As you see, it, it's a challenging task. It's not easy task to to have this. So this is the fill the mask. It's the language model. The QA, we have seen the QA, the summarization. You can find you can use the T5. Let's try the small model. So you have here, it's like my name is. Uh, OK, this is translation. Summarization, OK. Uh, by the way, OK, maybe Facebook model. OK, this, this is this is better. So you have here the example, so you have a long text and you can compute, you have the summary of this text. It's short, so this is a summarization. And guess who, who is the big player with the, with, the, uh, with the hugging face? Google and Facebook and uh, IBM and Microsoft, they contribute with their models with, uh, with this one. And also the, it's like the, you have the, you have uh, very well, as you see here, it's like Facebook and and Microsoft. They are contributing with this, and some of the Cardiff universities. It's uh, like you have here this one. So this one is sentiment analysis model. It's a trend about. It's a trend on around two million tweets. Can you imagine that this is multilingual? It supports eight languages: Arabic, English, uh, uh, Dutch, Hindi, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and this is. It's like this is uh, it's like uh, I guess it's in Eng it's in Spanish. So you have this as a positive. It's a classified as positive. You can try something in Arabic, like I don't know. It's like. Uh, you know, So this is positive. It can, it can understand also Arabic. So, uh, as you see here, it's like well-known no, universities. No. They are contributing with their models, and you have here it's like a lot of models. That is, it's like 
I can I can stay <laughs> like until tomorrow morning to describe these tasks. I, I I guess that you should try it yourself and try different NLP tasks. That's how you can really understand how NLP works. Okay, uh, doctor, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, now uh, for the tweets, now uh, will the Arabic be the, uh, the same accuracy as English since it's uh, way more complicated as you described? Or you mean for, because for, the, Card for the Cardiff model? Yes. Um, um, okay. Um, the idea here it says. Uh, Okay, so to build a multilingual model, you need to provide uh, um, like instances in different languages with their labels. So in fact, it, it's one model. It's not multiple models. Okay, so you need to understand that. I, I know your question is that it's like maybe you imagine that you have a model for English and a model, a model for Italian, model for Hindi, model for French. It, no, 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 it's not the case. It's one model that you provide all the uh, uh, training instances in different languages and the model can learn. I mean, because it's, uh, it's like you have, it's a huge neural network that uh, that's why you have, you have here around 2 million tweets. If you want the English model alone, I guess it's the the one with uh, the one without XLM, XLM. It's the large one. So here it's uh, trained only on 60 million tweets, English tweets. Okay, so it's uh, 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 I mean the model is uh, it's like if you want to see what is the result for that, I can show you because you can access to the um, here in the paper. I think his question is related to the accuracy of uh, Arabic language and natural language processing compared to uh, English, for example. That's that's I think Muhammad's question, isn't it, Muhammad? Or in general, uh, Ab Abdullah, yeah. uh, Abdullah, Abdullah. I think this is your uh, general. Abdullah, like, but uh, yeah, uh, for this model, yeah, and in general. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, from from my experience, we're always uh, behind Arabic mm -hmm. language. Uh, mm -hmm. I worked in a company where uh, we tried to implement, let's say, uh, an automated uh, machine. So, but we had lots of trouble uh, recognizing Arabic language since uh, we have even in Bahrain different different dialects. So it was almost impossible to do to do that uh, type of uh, recognition. Uh, I was wondering, will this be always the case, or what can we do to to overcome this issue? Because it's I mean, it's really complicated and I don't see any any way to solve it or any initiative. So we are oh, always yeah. behind. OK, uh, yes, yes, I, I understand. I, I agree with you. It's it's really complex. It's not easy to build uh, a natural language uh, processing system. It depends on it's like always in your data and the coverage of your data. Maybe you have a, it's like a large data set but it's like the coverage of data set doesn't fit to your domain that you apply in your company and um, and um, uh, 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 one way to improve this is to um, to have uh, it's like to to apply uh, several techniques so the first one is to fine tune the machine learning model so this is pure machine learning work and the second thing is to uh, to uh, to uh, to to try to fine tune the the, the uh, your data set so you can filter your data set that is uh, you can uh, like only keep uh, data that is relevant to your domain it's it's really important that to make your data to fit you to to your domain 
And the third technique to improve is to, it's something that is called the human in the loop. With the human in the loop, uh, you can, it's like if, you, if your company want to invest in that, it's, uh, it's like you, uh, in the long run, you can, you can involve the human to provide your feedback. So for instance, imagine that you, uh, you build a system to classify uh, tweets in some fine grain Bahraini uh, dialects, let's say, and you 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 should agree with the customer that okay, please provide me feedback. Okay, this is really that dialect. This is not. So you can have um, uh, um, uh, it's like a human validated data set that can you feed it again to the machine learning model to improve the accuracy, and this process is continuous. So it will improve uh, like with time. That's that's really it's difficult. It, it's hard to implement, uh, to implement, but it's not possible. I I see that a lot of companies they include this human in the loop uh, technique to improve their uh, uh, results, and uh, that's one one option. The other option maybe you can use the. Uh, Maybe you can use the, uh, the the cognitive services in uh, like in Azure and uh, AWS. I can show you here. Uh, so you have you have here a list uh, in Azure and uh, let me find the cognitive. Yes. So you have. And in Azure, you have the cognitive services, and in Amazon, it's called recognition. And these models are built on really large and huge corpora, and you can read the documentation if the, your task is supported or not. So you can here explore what kind of task that you can um, uh, implement. Uh, you can, it's like uh, what kind of functions that you can call. So you have for speech, you have uh, speech to text, uh, text to speech, speech translation, speech recognition, and for the language you have named entity sentiment analysis, and so on. For instance, you are interested in sentiment analysis and you want to see the performance. You can request for a demo, and you can see if uh, if uh, their model is like can outperform or can provide you a satisfactory, satisfactory result for you or not. You can use that model for a while to generate some resources for you, but then you can build your own because you cannot afford the cost of running the cognitive services of Microsoft uh, for a for a long time. That's that's what another solution that you can implement. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Dr. Matthew. Uh, does um, so. Uh, the main issue that we have in Arabic now, uh, from what I understand, is the the lack of uh, information or lack of language resources. resources. So language so resources. That's what, language resources. So if we have enough language resources, we'll have the same accuracy as the English, because we see how advanced mm. the English became. No, 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 not not necessarily because no. the Arabic language itself it has some complication. It's not uh, it's like it has some. Uh, um, Maybe maybe you can you need to uh, to uh, pre-process the data differently to have to improve the result for the uh, you cannot apply the same technique that is applied for English to have really advanced result. As you see, it's like the rich morphology. It's it's a huge challenge. It's not uh, as in English you have isolated words. In English, it's in Arabic. It's you have the words connected. Together, you it's like the the letters are connected together. So that's that's uh, one of the challenges that the morphology and the the nature of the writing in Arabic that's that's a challenge. But you can cover that with uh, it's like really huge uh, corpus of data. So if it is representative enough, you can you can obtain a really satisfactory result. Okay, so lack of resources and methods, but. To, to summarize. Yes, yeah, right. not uh, lack of methods, but you it's like you need to do some work to tailor or to fine tune, let's say, to fine tune the existing uh, method to
to to uh, to deal with the Arabic language. Okay, and no one did that uh, yet. There is no, mm, you know. No, no, no. There is, there is. Uh, it's like people are working, but it's, uh, it's like we need more efforts. It's not okay. enough. You yes. have the it's like that people from uh, from the camel uh, lab. It's a lot of people. They made this tool, the the camel tool, which is an open source, and it's uh, it's really good. But it's not. Uh, it's like we need to improve. You so. Uh, if you do an uh, um, it's like a contribution or start improvement, it's it's really important that we contribute to them to improve the tool. And also Taha uh, uh, it's like it's it's really important that uh, uh, it's like uh, we help him and encourage him to improve more and more the tools for the Arabic language. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any other question or comment? Uh, thank you, Dr. Matez, for this uh, interesting uh, lecture. Thank you, Dr. Nabil, for inventing Dr. Matez to give us this uh, topic. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, it opened our eyes to يعني, many applications that we didn't know about. Thank you very much for your efforts. You're, you're welcome, you're welcome. It's my pleasure that it's, uh, it's like, uh, I hope that it's like the lecture is so useful for you and it's, uh, it opens and, uh, it was and new doors for you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so at the end of uh, this uh, session, I would like it, uh, once again to thank Dr. Matez for his uh, valuable uh, uh, valuable uh, lecture. It was really interesting, and uh, I think we have learned a lot. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Matez. You are welcome, Dr. Nabil. It's it was my pleasure, and uh, thanks thanks uh, so much for the invitation. It was. Uh, a uh, really nice opportunity to uh, to have this lecture in the Arabic NLP and uh, it was my pleasure. It's like I, I enjoyed uh, uh, this lecture. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you and inshallah we'll, we'll see you in uh, some coming uh, other lectures inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Okay, assalamu alaikum. عليكم السلام ورحمة الله السلام يعطيكم العافية جميعا